Let's start now with a quote from the Psalm 36. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. This brings us to the next topic, which is considering the etymologies of some words. And these words are photography, contemplation, and light. Let's start with photography. As you know, the word photography comes from ancient Greek. Phosphotos means light, and graphe means to write or to paint. So, without light, there's no way for us to take a photograph. Light is vital and too often is taken also for granted. This reminds me of a Zen story. A baby fish once asked an older fish, uh, a wiser fish, I keep hearing people talk about this thing called the sea. Just what is the sea? The sea is what surrounds you, replies the older fish. But why can't I see it? says the baby fish. The sea is within you and all around you. You were born in the sea and you will die in the sea. The sea envelopes you just like your skin does. Confucius said, fish forget that they live in river and lakes. Just like people forget that they live in the magic of the Tao. And we all live in the magic of light. Furthermore, when we take pictures, we don't take pictures of objects or people or animals. We are literally recording the light reflected by, it, by our subject. So, light. Without light, there wouldn't be any life on Earth. In fact, our ancestors saw the light as a god. Even more interesting, the word used for god in languages like ancient Greek, Latin, Italian, French, Spanish, has a strong connection with light. Deus, Dio, Dios, Die. God is where there is light. Saint John simply wrote, God is light. And if you also think about the Buddha, he is called enlightened too. This meant that the light was with him and within him, and that that he could recognize the true light as well. The early Christians, too, they were called photismenoi, which means the enlightened ones. So, by being alert, by chasing the light, we really intend to seek the divine in our world. And this is exactly what we do when we sit to meditate. Domain and our community teach us that by having a discipline, a simple though not an easy one, a discipline that teaches us to be open and aware, recognizing, letting go the distractions, we will eventually become aware that we are immersed in the beauty of light, which is God, which is love. And we can finally contemplate it. In the Eastern Church, love, beauty and truth are simply different attributes to the Divine Source. But of course, as human beings, if we talk about light, we need to talk also about shadow and darkness. We cannot live only in the daylight as we cannot see God face to face in its full power. We need to we need a shadow component in our pictures, just as we need to integrate the dark aspects of our own personalities in our life. And now, let's pass to the third word to take into account. The word is contemplation. 
The word contemplation comes from Latin and means to observe, to pay attention to a portion of the sky in order to understand God's will. In fact, ancient priests used to draw a rectangle on the sky with a magic stick and focus on that frame and see what was happening there. So, for example, birds or other things happening in the sky and by that they used to uh, interpret these things and deliver to other people God's will. So, if we put together the words photography and contemplation, we understand contemplative photography as a discipline that leads us to paint with light with a purpose to see the light, be aware of it, and try to confer a meaning to it. And we'll see now some ways that might help us in doing so. In fact, we cannot expect to learn to take the best contemplative pictures ever in just a couple of days. And we don't even want that. This is not our purpose. We want to take a journey together. So we need to exercise and to train our mind, our eyes and our soul. Little by little, step by step, few pictures a day. And this is a discipline that help us to recognize the work of light. Just with our meditation practice, we need a discipline for contemplative photography as well. In the first week of the introductory course to Christian meditation, the main topic question is, what is Christian meditation? As John Main said, what we learn is that Christ is our light. The task of Christian meditation is simply to uncover the brilliance of the light of Christ in our own hearts. And this will be our task too. Father Germain provided us with a discipline, which is dedicating half an hour in the mornings and half an hour in the evenings to be present in God's presence, by remaining silent and by repeating a mantra. We are not speaking to God, we are not thinking about God during meditation. We are simply listening and enjoying being with Him. And we will try to do the same with contemplative photography. While we will be shooting with this contemplative mindset, we we'll try not to think of the result of our pictures or how, if they will be appreciated by our friends, by our followers. We will simply try to be aware and attentive of the world that surrounds us and the unique relationship that we have with it. If in Christian meditation we pass from the mind to the heart, in contemplative photography we will pass from the mind to the eye.